I'd like to pass over to Jason then. Talk to you about the Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much for inviting me. Um, I'm going to just explain a bit about uh, myself, where I come from, why I'm here, why am I talking to you? That was the title of my talk. Um, I'm talking to you because I'm not from here. I'm an outsider. Okay? I came here six years ago from London. I lived in London for 22 years. And I'm probably the person who's lived here the least longest in this room. And I'm proud of it. Okay? Um, I'm going to try and finish with four words today. So I'm going to, what I'm going to say is going to try and build up to four words that I hope you take away and have a think about. And I'm also, you'll be glad to hear, not going to go for the record of walkouts. All right? <laughs> Standing at 50, but we'll see where we get to. Um, my background is I'm from, I've worked in language teaching and English language teaching for over 20 years. In London, I do it slightly differently. I'm also a digital publisher of educational materials, and I have an interest in social learning and self-organised learning. Uh, I'm a governor of South of a school. My two boys go there. And I've lived here for six years, and I love the place. And I swim in the sea a lot. If you follow me on Facebook, it's just pictures of waves. <laughs> um, now, a few years ago, I got tired of going up onto the seafront, looking at the Pavilion Peninsula, and then reading at the same time things in the past, it's going to be a car park, it's, you know, the pavilion's falling down, la 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 la. And I thought, why, 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 why can't we build something fantastic there? What is the problem? What's holding it back? It looks horrible, it doesn't serve the community as much as it should, it's wasted space. You know, there has to be a way. So I brought a friend of mine down who I just full disclosure, I've known in 22 years, we share an affliction, we support Everton Football Club. <laughs> and Sean is a world-renowned architect by accident, okay? So I only know Sean through football, not through architecture, construction, or anything like that. And Sean came down and I said, look, Harbour Beach, Beach Harbour, what would you do with that? He said, fantastic, this is amazing. It's probably the most attractive development site in the UK at the moment, if not Europe. Okay, so the intrinsic value of that piece of land is astronomical. Think bigger. That's what I'm going to get to on this thing. Okay, so Sean introduced me to a sustainable developer called Pete Housel. I didn't know Pete, I don't know him very well at all, but he builds things in a different way. He raised 200 million to regenerate part of Millsborough a few years ago before the crash. He builds things in China. He does it on a sustainable way. Everyone in, how many builders have we got in there? How many developers? I know one developer in there. Okay, we've got another one there. What Pete does is he builds financial structures that pump, that, that can be invested in from social funds, massive social funds. And then he employs local developers and local builders from day one to build something fantastic that everyone's agreed to. And he does it starting with huge engagement with the community. Build what the community wants, what the town needs, employ local builders and local developers. That pumps money into the local economy from day one. It's not the same as the old model that councils use, which I've been lobbying the council for for two and a half years, to say, look, don't do it the old way. Don't do it the old way. The old way is the council say, here's a piece of land, let's flog it to one developer. They put or would have a tender for it, put a tender out. Now they put all these plans in that seem already nice. The developer buys the land, the best one that gets chosen, and then they use high powered lawyers to run through, dilute the design, and get what's going to make them the most money. The people who lose in that are the people of the town, and not just the people of the town, you. Because if something fantastic is built there, all of your businesses will improve and prosper. Okay? So there is self-interest as part of this speech as well. Okay, so that's the background. That's what I started doing. Out of that, other things happen. Facebook page, 1,600 followers, lots of dialogue, lots of discussion. Um, you know, we use social media a lot. I use it in my business, so I use it here. Um, We've got those experts here, we create a website, we've got an ideas forum on the website. If you go, there should be a bit of paper on the table. 
And there are a couple of simple links to follow. I created a presentation that has images and some notes around what I'm talking about now. But also there's a link to a thing called um, the Way Forward Wire, which is a network we're trying to set up, which is a push and pull thing to try and engage people offline as well as online and get real feedback. So just follow those links if you get a moment. We also had an event a few weeks ago called the Condor Moment in collaboration with, uh, and collaboration is a word I'm going to get to at the end probably, with Air 107.2. And the idea of that was, and this is the whole, the whole idea of Way Forward is, Let's not dwell on the past, let's look to the future, let's be adaptable. And with Air and David Jones and Air, we thought we cooked up, and Craig down there from, from Covershaw, who we can put lots and lots of time in, we cooked up an event to say, look, how many people do, you think, do we think we can get down there, just down there, to be positive? To say, okay, Condor's going, but you can do lots of things with this bit of land, it's not the end of the world. Our is with, Okay, which is a third of the size of Weymouth, which has 9,000 students there only nine months of the year, build an arts centre that now has a business hub for startups, okay, in West Wales. The arts centre and business hub gets 700,000 tourists a year now and turns over almost 11 million pounds and, and created 170 jobs. So if Amorismith can build something great that serves the community, that brings tourists in, and provides more income than the alleged 10 million that Condor does, and by the way, someone at the council high up told me an FOI request went in to try and find out where the 7 to 10 million that Condor brings in came from. So there's been a huge search Guess what? No one knows. So, don't always believe what you read and what people say, okay? So, the, my, my point here is that with thinking slightly differently, getting together, things can change. Things can be great for everyone, not just developers or people blogging stuff, you know, to do with developers, so that it can be great for everyone. Okay, so. Lots of things going on. Out of way forward came stuff with links with Butler College, Baron Miles, who's the, the careers director there, has been mobilising students who are making videos and putting stuff online. Um, we've got a maker's market starting soon, we hope before Christmas, in a piece of land uh, on, on the, by the cinema and behind the, the White Hart, where, which is never used, and the council has said they're going to let us do it so young people can create stuff and sell it and start their own little businesses start trading, you know, so good stuff like that. So I'll, I'll read it is to kind of spread some positivity, spread some ideas of changing things. If you go on our website, there's a, there's a thing called Idea Scale, which is uh, a thing that anyone can put an idea up on how to improve Weymouth, and then anyone else can go along, and comment on it, and vote on it, and when you vote on it, it goes up. So the more votes you get, the higher you go. So we're kind of, we see ourselves as a kind of sounding board, a marketing board, an ideas generator that anyone can jump on. So please jump on us. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so out of all of this, to wrap up, and I'll keep it short, what I'm trying to say is, if I, as an individual who's come in with fresh eyes and some crazy ideas, can draw up 1,600 Facebook followers, get my face on the front of the paper, lobby the council, get to know the new chief executive via LinkedIn, have two meetings with him down there for two hours at a time, in his first, one in his first week, then anything is possible. Because who am I? I'm just a scruffy bloke with a crap t-shirt. Yeah? <laughs> so, what I'm saying is, we're in a new era of connectedness and change. Alright? Change with the times. You have to change with the times. Anyone who doesn't is cactus. So, some buzzwords. Attitude. Attitude, not age. I put it here. You know, attitude isn't age dependent. There are lots of old people jumping out of planes. I saw it on the news last night. Ambition. My friend here said, We're not, we are ambitious. But 
Do we feel it? Do the people on the street feel more ambitious? I don't think so. When I was promoting the convoy event, I stood on the street for four days with my little placard, making a fool out of myself with a leaflet, you know, handing out leaflets. But I wasn't making a fool out of myself. I was doing research. And the research I got, when people walked past it, everyone learned to be aware, oh, you're wasting your time. Nothing ever changes. No one would do anything. You're wasting your time. No one ever listens. They're all crooks. Seriously, that's what they're saying. And I will tell you now, the level of anger and distrust in the town people is astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. And the first one they blame is they thought I worked for the council like the council's like, they blamed me. And I went, that's okay. I don't mind. You can blame me, but I'm not the guy you should blame, really. Then they started talking. Then they blamed the council. The council's been no overall control for what? Since 1974. So it's just infighting and point scoring on a political basis. That's it. Okay? Nothing has improved or changed. Leadership hasn't done what it should. They also blame you guys because they talk about vested interests and in the nicest possible sense this room contains the vested interests. Okay? Because you are all successful leaders of businesses. So, my final point is I'm going to say attitude, education, jobs, new jobs, year-round jobs, Technology, use the technology, link it to the jobs. Collaboration. Collaboration is key. We compete as Weymouth and Portland with Bridport, Bournemouth, Bournemouth, other places. Not with ourselves. Even if you have a business that does the same thing as another business, it's about collaboration. The world is bigger than Weymouth. Let's get together, let's collaborate. You can talk to us, you can talk to Craig, you can talk to David Jones, talk to Barrett. Just collaborate. So, you are the leaders of this town. You have the power to change this town. Think about it. Do it. And let's have some transparency and collaboration and a smile on our faces. And make those people who had a go at me, who said, this is crap, nothing changes, make them proud to be from Wales. Thank you.